And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Tinner's Trail is the first game in the Tree Frog line of games. Tree Frog is actually kind of a subsidiary or a new name for War Frog. Uh, I guess it's a nicer name, easier to... Because these aren't war games. These are not war games, therefore Tree Frog. Well, anyway, it's designed by Martin Wallace, one of the greatest game designers that there is. And Martin Wallace is usually known for inserting his theme into games. You can see that in Age of Steam with the railroads. You can see that with Liberté with the French Revolution. This game is actually about mining in Cornwall in the 19th century. Now, that doesn't really inspire me too much, but I mean, it's still pretty... Uh, does the game do a good job of presenting the theme? If you look at the board here, you'll see a map of the game and then all these charts all over the board. Now, these charts really aren't as complicated as it seems. And in fact, that's what I'll say about the game in itself. Going over the rule book, and it's not that thick of a rule book. Uh, what have we got? Ten pages here. Not, you know... Not, not too bad. It's not, doesn't seem that complicated. You know, at, at first glance, I look at all the pieces in the game and I think, oh, maybe it's a little bit more complicated than I thought. But once I read the rules, I'm like, nah, it's not so bad. Then you play the game and you think, well, maybe there's more to this than meets the eye. Well, I like Tinner's Trail, but with some caveats. First of all, I feel, it feels kind of samey. Secondly, it's very, very um, not intuitive. And maybe this is a new direction that Martin Wallace is going in because Brass is the same way. You're first playing, playing a brass, you're kind of like, oh, what am I doing? Well, Tinner's Trail, I think it's the opposite. Tinner's Trail, you think you know what you're doing, and then at the end you realize, oh, maybe I should have done something differently, just because of the way the prices fluctuate. It's basically a game that consists of auctions and buying and selling of resources. There's not too many different kinds of pieces, but you need to know the right ones to use. There's a smattering of luck, which actually can uh, basically determine the outcome of different parts of the game, and so people who despise luck may dislike it, but really there's just a lot of knowing how much money to bid for something and knowing how much money to pay for something. I, I think that's where you're going to come into the crux of the game. Players are using dice, and these dice have different sides in them. For example, this one has 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. This one has 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and a blank side. And you're basically rolling these dice to determine each round the price of different resources. The resources are cubes. We have water, we have tin, and we have copper. And the water is kind of, um, it's all important in the game, and yet you don't want it. Because water will be present in different areas, and the more water that there is in an area, the more difficult it is to mine that area to get the resources out. So players are building different aspects, or building different upgrades to areas to get rid of the water. The game takes place with a series of auctions, and players will take these auctions and use these really, I mean, Really, these are nice pieces here. They'll be building mines in the different areas that they win auctions for. And now auctions are tough because you could spend a little bit too much money and I think lose the game because of that. Sometimes when you bid for an area, you're not sure what cubes are in that area or what resources will be in that area. Those are determined randomly. You roll these dice to find out after you've won the auction. So you're auctioning not knowing what you're going to get. Some, you know, I actually think that's pretty fun, uh, but some people may not be thrilled about it. Each round of the game, there's different resources that are ready. You can have these little miners that can go in your area. You can there's there's railroads, there's ports, and all these wooden pieces. And there's white discs and black, well roads. I guess they're called audits in the game. And all these different pieces are helping you get rid of water, making your properties more valuable, allowing you to mine more at a time. And so players have ten actions on their turn. And if you look at the board. There's a turn track here on the side, and it's not so easy to see. Let's see if I can get it closer. This turn track here on this side, and basically as you use actions, you move your piece down. And whoever's the farthest back gets to take their next turn. Over here you can see the different things that show up each turn and different kinds of resources, and then up here is the order of play. And like I said, there's a lot of charts on the board, but they're really not that complex. There's really only a few things you can do each turn. Start an auction. Now you have different... Um, choices in which regions you want to auction off and try and mine in. But what I find really interesting about the game is at the end of the at the end of each round there's this chart here on the board and these are where you're selling your goods. But you can only sell selling goods is so much more profitable at the beginning of the game and as the game goes on it gets less and less profitable. So when I first played the game it seemed to make sense to me to get as much as I could and sell it all in the first turn, putting all my resources into that because I got the best payoff. But those smaller payoffs 
can really come back to haunt you at the end of the game if they add up and they have more of the smaller ones. What's the best thing to buy? Is it best to buy ports? Is it best to buy railroads? Is it best to buy miners? There's a decent amount of choices here. It's a good Martin Wallace game, but the game only takes about an hour. It plays three to four players, I think, very well. In fact, it's not really that bad as a three-player game. But you're going to find some people who are kind of ho-hum about the theme. Buying and selling tin and aluminum, yay, you know, that's not really that interesting. And then there's that action you can take, buying pasties, which gives you a dollar. And I've seen someone do that nine times in a row. Or was that me? Well, anyway, I mean, the, the idea is interesting. The auctions are a little bit more boring than you might think because many times only one person has any kind of money to do anything with. It's not a bad game. Which, coming from Martin Wallace, is kind of a negative thing because he makes some of the greatest games ever designed, but still means it's a tremendous game because his okay games are usually heads and tails above most people's good games. So, I don't know. Is it something you're willing to try? Well, it's an economic game with a decent amount of randomness in it. It doesn't take that long to play. has some pretty good wooden components in it. And the theme is, is, is thick. It works, although it just may not be up your alley, good or bad. I like it, but I don't love it. It's just... A game I'll play if I'm in the mood for mining. How often is that? I don't know. How often do we play the game? Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.